Hey everybody, it's Hudson. And in this week's Approaching the Scene, this video is actually releasing the same day that OM1 is releasing their major mid-year update to Photo Raw 2019. So 2019.5 is coming out today. Uh, you know, and I've had a lot of questions from people that, that haven't used on one or that used it back in the day before it converted to Photo Raw and they're, they're kind of wondering about what's going on right now. So I thought I'd just give a little, uh, a little quick tour. I'll run through a raw process of photo from Cuba in it and I'll show you the three things that, that I'm really excited about that they added to this version alongside just improved stability and speed and performance. And then I'll take a couple of questions at the end. So if you take a look, if you've ever been a user of OM One's Photo Raw, I think the first thing you'll notice is the dual screen support here. I got a grid view on the left, I've got a loop view on the right, the whole image. Uh, and the way they integrated that, one thing I just love is if I flip on my main editing screen here over to the grid view, it automatically throws the loop view up on the other screen back and forth. And if I run into edit an image and edit, it automatically puts a grid view on the other side so I can select images as if I was in the library. I don't have to worry about clogging a film strip down on the bottom. And it just knows that that's what makes sense. And, and I, you know, there's other software that I use. I gotta say, it's always kind of annoying when I'm doing dual screen mode with Lightroom that, you know, if I flip into loop view, I can have dual loop view and I have to go flip into grid view on the other monitor. Um, so for me, at least with the system that I'm running, I find that right out of the box, this dual monitor mode is working really, really well. So, you know, just with a click, I'm back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm, I'm just recording this screen. I'll jump in and do some screen casting. We'll go through, um, and as I edit up an image here from Cuba, I'll show you some of the things that I really like about this update. So, uh, going down in here, there's a photo I captured in Havana. I was running around with my uh, with my Nikon Z6 and I had the 105 1.4 adapted on it with the FTZ adapter. And we were going out late in the day. We thought we'd wander the streets a little bit. The wife, my my aunt, my kids and I. And you know, we were kind of walking west towards the sunset, a little bit to the southwest, and that beautiful light was filtering down the street. So I'm gonna jump in here. This is the image that I wanna work on. I, I saw this big puddle. There had just been a rainstorm. It was clearing. There was a lot of drama. It's a pretty high contrast scene, all backlit from the sky being up through this canyon of the old city street. We're in old Havana. But I love this reflection. So I'm gonna jump in here. You know, I, I'm in the Browse uh, app right now. There's sort of two main panels here. There's Browse, there's Edit, and there's some compositing tools. You know, if, if you happen to select multiple images while you're in the browse, you know, let's say you're in grid and you select multiple images, you can do panoramas, HDR, and focus stacking right out of the browse module. But if you want to edit an image, you jump in here and you've got layers. You can put multiple images together on layers and do composites. Everything's raw. Everything's metadata driven uh, for those of you that haven't used it before. You know, this was a quick grab shot. I literally was dodging people walking towards me on the street. The car was coming at me. I had to lock focus. I'm at 1.4, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so with 105 millimeter, I really needed to nail the Chevrolet um, <laughs> lettering on the grill of this beautiful old Chevrolet. Uh, but I didn't have time to get everything level and just dialed in. So I want to crop this more modern car out. I kind of want to keep this reflection in the puddle if I can. I got real low over that puddle. I was hoping for a reflection right as the tires started to hit the water before it, before it broke. So I'm going to grab the top. I want to kind of get rid of a little bit of that blown out sky. And I want to just eliminate that little car. I don't mind the guy looking back at it. He kind of draws your attention into the car. You know, these people on the street they're not bothering me either. I don't want to take this corner right to the edge, but I, I think that's a pretty good spot right there. You know, I might, I might straighten it a little bit. If I bring my cursor down, I can just straighten it a little, but I don't want to lose too much of that reflection. I don't think it needs to be perfectly level. I think that's pretty good right there. And I might pull this in just a little. I want a little bit of that detail of that old concrete, but I don't, I want to stop right about there at the top. I don't want to get that little dive into where that blown out part widens. So I'll call that good. I'll hit enter. You know, none of this is non-destructive. I can always go back and look at it. It's just raw editing. Uh, so I'm going to go into develop and I'm going to go ahead and hold down the J key. When I hold down the J key, I get a clipping mask, highlights and shadows. And, and the way I work with photo raw, it's a little bit different than Adobe camera raw. I tend to pull the whites back just about halfway in order to keep some contrast in the, in the whites and the highlights. And I'll pull highlights back about three quarters of the way, you know, well, 
just about all the, and there's a little specular highlight here. I'm all right with that. That's not a big deal. Maybe I pull whites. Just, I don't want to go all the way to the left with them. But I find that exposure has a ton of power. If I want to get that last little bit out, I can just move. I can, I can look at my levels here too. I can move that last little bit out of the white zone so that we don't have any pure white in the image if I was to go ahead and print this later. Uh, and so then I'm going to hold down the J key again and pull the black slider until I start to lose some of the shadow detail there. You can see it in the tire. I don't mind having a little bit of black. Black is just black ink on paper. It's not an absence of ink where you get that kind of gloss differential. So I'm good with a little bit of black in the tire there. And then I'm just going to pull the shadow slider and kind of watch to see. I'm really looking at the car because I can do some differential work with a vignette or something on the rest of the scene. I'm just really looking at the car and I like what I see right there. That looks really good. I'm going to do the same thing with the mid-tone slider. Just kind of move it around, watching the image, not watching the slider, and come to a stop at the spot I like best. It's basically barely moved at all. Um, I might warm the scene up a little bit in the white balance and the temperature slider. It was late in the day. I think it was even warmer than the auto white balance on the camera captured. I'm going to just warm it a touch. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to zoom into 100%. Yep, I nailed that, that 1.4 lens focus. That's looking really good. I don't see any noise in the shadows because it was shot at uh, F or at uh, ISO 100, which is the base ISO for the Z6. I'm going to just go ahead, hold the option key down to get a black and white mask. I like sharpening in black and white. And I'm just going to watch the image while I pull that slider and squeeze a bit of sharpness, more sharpness out of it without overdoing it. You know, usually I find with my, uh, with my digital images these days, I'm going somewhere around 30 to 50 uh, on a well-exposed image. And that looks, that looks just a little bit better to me. That's nice. I like the way it falls off and the driver is just kind of a, a faceless person in there. That's great. All right, so I will call that good. And you know, then I could go into effects and I could add all of these really simple sort of filters that are really, really powerful. I'll show you how they work. But I have, a, I have a preset. I often start with my own presets. Uh, and, and I have a whole set of presets I kind of created in, in the 2019, this year. These are my kind of most up-to-date presets. And this is such a warm image. I'm thinking about my fall presets. Uh, and I can look at this quick view browser. And I can get the images looking bigger or smaller with just the plus or minus keys and really get an idea of what these are going to look like with these presets. And I remember I, I sort of worked on an image from the Portland Japanese gardens that was just this gold foliage reflecting in a pool. And I, I called it gold reflections. And I'm thinking that's going to look really nice on this. It does. I like the way that that looks. So now one of the things in on one that's really cool is when you use presets, I'm going to go ahead and close down this left panel because I like a bigger view of the image. They're a starting point, and they actually show you every move I made in effects to make this happen. So you can kind of reverse engineer what I did. And they don't affect your develop moves at all. Those just underlie everything. This is all raw again. So these are layered here, and we can turn each one off and have a look-see to see what it's actually doing to the image. Just hit these radio buttons. Uh, and as I come down, you know, the first one's a tone enhancer. It's adding a bit of contrast, and it's it's boosting the shadows a little bit. Looks good to me. The sunshine filter, yeah, it's adding a little bit of pop. I don't know if it's necessary, but it isn't doing anything detrimental to the image. I could probably get rid of it. It isn't making a big impact. Dynamic contrast is something that actually adds kind of sharpening micro contrast pop to the scene. The one thing I don't want to do is be adding that to out of focus elements in the background and creating jaggedy edges. I, I spent a lot of money on that Nikon 105 1.4 lens and I don't want to mess it up. So this is where PhotoRaw gets really powerful. We're here totally raw metadata edits, but I've got these masking abilities complete with tons of blending options just like you'd have in, in Photoshop. Uh, but we'll jump out of there, and, and what I really want to do here is just go into my masking, and I'm going to invert the mask. That's just going to completely eliminate the effect except anywhere that I paint it in. And I'm going to go up here with my masking brush and switch to paint in, and I'm going to leave my opacity down about, I don't know, 60, 70 percent, somewhere in there with 100 percent feather, so it's a nice big soft brush. And then I'll just grab the pen from my Wacom tablet, and I'll set it so that the uh, 
the brush adjusts size, or the wheel adjusts size, my little spin wheel with my finger here, and I just really want to paint that, that dynamic contrast into the part of the scene where I want it in various strokes here. So really the front end of the car, you know, maybe a little bit just on this curb and some of the, the cobbles right under the car and that, that water and that reflection. Boom, good to go. That's all I really want to do. And just in case I want to use that mask again on another layer, I can just copy it so that I could copy and put that paste in for paste that part for just the sharp part of the image. So now we're not affecting any of these out of focus parts, not adding any contrast where I don't want to. Uh, let's see, color enhancer. You know, I think that's overdoing it uh, in the in the in the oranges a little bit. I'm going to pull the saturation back on the oranges just a touch. And you know, one of the neat things, I can always jump back here and go to my underlying raw processing develop moves and just say, you know, I think overall the, the saturation is a little high for the scene. I'm, I'm going to back it off. I like the way the color's set. I like the tones, but I just want to back that saturation off. Just bounce around in here. It's just super cool. Um, and then, you know, the, one of the things I didn't do, I probably should have done right off the bat, is just go in the, the retouch tool here. I'm going to use the perfect eraser. And I want to get rid of this little bottle right here that's on the street. You know, there was nothing I could do about it. I'm going to make some motions with that brush that are sort of the same general direction as the cobblestones and see what happens. This brush can just be magic. Sometimes it does a beautiful job just, just with a hit like that. Yep, really, really nice. You know, I could kind of feather it in a little bit with, with a second move right there. There's another little bit of trash here. Yep, that looks great. You'd never know it was there. And just this quick swipe of that guy. And boom, you know, we're looking pretty good. I might just feather that little edge in. Call it bueno. All right, so uh, the last thing I'm going to do here is a vignette. I'm going to turn on the, the vignette filter. These should always be really tailored to the image at hand. I like the big softy setting. I like the fact that I can turn it down, see what that, that darkening edge is set like. I'm going to reduce its size, change its roundness so that it's much more round, drop its size a little bit more. Recenter it right over the car like this. Turn that feather back up to fade it in really gently. I might make it just a little bit bigger so that it captures more of that car's uh, right left fender there. There we go. And then I'm going to turn the brightness of the edge back up. I don't want to pull it down by 60. I want to pull it more down by like 30. It's a subtle effect. And there you go. So, you know, I was able to quickly lay all these effects in here by using one of my presets. I could have also just chosen to add any of these filters or mixed any in, but you know, it was nice that I can just jump in and customize them. And I also see, you know, how I designed this thing in the beginning. So I told you I'd tell you another couple things I really like about the dot five update. One is this history panel and the fact that I can run in here and see exactly where I was at any given point. You know, and we could we could jump to that spot in the edit, and and undo everything above it, or jump right back. So I can I can jump around here and and undo things precisely without just hitting Control Z. That was something Photo Raw was really missing um, before. And then the other thing that I love is if I want to synchronize edits on multiple images. Um, you know, you you can't see the left screen because I'm not recording it right now, but I've selected several images here. I could select a whole bunch. Let's say you were doing a portrait shoot and the lighting is identical on every image. And then I go over here on the screen that I am recording over here on the, the right screen. Uh, and I could just simply say, well, hold on a sec. There we go. I could click on this and say sync. And one of the things I really like is they've added selective syncing and they've added crop syncing and the retouching that I've done, like using that perfect eraser, whether I want that to be synced or not. So maybe you have a whole series of images with some sensor dust in a blue sky. You could synchronize that sensor dust removal. Uh, the the, the um, retouch brush would be the thing to use for that. But one nice thing is you can turn on that you want to synchronize develop settings, effect settings, portrait settings, local adjustments. Local adjustments are just graduated filters and brushes and, uh, and a, a really another powerful set of tools that you can do. 
um, just to different parts of the image. But the other thing that it gets more granular than that, you can jump in here and look at the different settings that you could choose to synchronize from develop or not. But I like the fact that at the beginning, you just choose to synchronize everything. It's a nice clean interface that can be opened up and get more granular only if you want it to. So for me, I think this software is really, really a nice update to Photo Raw 2019, which has gotten to be a really fast, stable product that gives you a great edit app that has the, the this basic raw processing and develop really fun finishing effects that lets you work in raw layers with masking on top of develop. And then, you know, it's got, it's got some portrait modes, local adjustment modes. It's, it, the more you get into it, the more powerful and fun it is. I think that if you haven't given it a test drive, you should definitely think about downloading a 30-day free trial. And I've got an affiliate link on this video if you're interested in it. I'm about to take a couple questions and, and I'll show you where links are on these YouTube videos. I, I've gotten a number of questions in the last few weeks. You know, where do I find out more about your workshops? Or, you know, where do you recommend to buy this? Do you have an affiliate link? I'd like to, to help you out in the work that you're doing. So for those of you that are subscribers and enjoy what I'm doing and you want to find out more, maybe you take a workshop or find out where to buy the stuff that I'm talking about. I've got all those links for you. If you're on any of the YouTube videos, you know, let's say you're on my page, hopefully you've subscribed, you go ahead, click in here. And where I've got the little description right here, you can click to show more. So last week I put links to all the gear, including the bodies and lenses I was talking about. Join me in a workshop. If you hit either of those links, for example, if you hit my, uh, my, my, my product links. I've got them all hyperlinked to different specific sections. I've got a bunch of different tripod options laid out for you with all the parts that you would need, advanced panoramic equipment, you get the idea. All that stuff's there with B&H and Amazon links. Uh, if you click on join me in a workshop, boom, it opens up my workshop page with which ones are available, which ones are still coming and yet to be announced. So all that stuff's there. And I will put on this video in that section a link to Photo Raw to the 30-day free download. Um, and you know, if you decide to go in and try that out, you know, check it out, try it for free for 30 days. The guys at On One and the women at On One are amazing. They're they're here in Portland, Oregon. I wind up over there at the office. They're a really great group of people that really care about photography. Um, and if you if you do decide to buy, consider jumping into on one plus it's this community of photographers i'm a year-round coach in it and i go into the forums and answer people's questions and i create monthly content on how to better use the software and i do a lot of training courses and i'm, I'm really active in that community and i think it's a great community of like-minded photographers who are all working to just get better in their craft and they're from all over the world and we have monthly photo critiques and a lot of really cool perks in that program. So at least read about it, check it out. It's definitely worth trying out. There's a whole bunch of information about it. If you click the link, um, you can find out what's coming in there. So, hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Uh, it's been a whole bunch of questions too about the new Nikon 14 to 30 that I'm working with and I will get a detailed review of that out as soon as I've shot enough with it to really feel confident. I'm loving it though, that's, that's the short answer. Uh, and I know we've got a big firmware update for those Nikon Z camera fans and users out there, and it's going to address some of the autofocus issues. Haven't got it yet. Can't say anything about it. We'll find out when we get it, and I'll definitely be talking about that. So until next week, thanks so much.